Dan Severn was a beast. The American fighter was the first elite level wrestler in the UFC, and his wrestling skills did him wonders early on as he dominated most of his opponents with takedowns, top control, and submissions. This led to him winning two UFC tournaments and the UFC Super Fight Championship. But his time at the top did not last for too long, and even though he fought for years after his prime and continued to win, he was no longer fighting the best. So how good was Dan Severn actually? Hey guys, it's Keon, and today I'm going to be talking about Dan the Beast Severn. This one was a highly requested one, and a lot of that is due to the amount of fights Dan has been in. To be honest, I was prepared to go through 100 plus fights, but sadly, many of his fights in the latter half of his career were not even recorded. At a certain point, people were no longer paying attention to Dan's career as he was no longer in his prime. Back when he started, he almost seemed unstoppable due to his elite level wrestling, but this soon changed as aging and injuries began to take a toll on Dan. So in this video, we're going to take a look at his MMA career to really understand how good he was. But first, shout out to the undisputed members of my Patreon. They get the extra perk of a shout out before each video. But even the interim members get early access and video to the Keon Kamara podcast. And as always, the money goes to charity. Now let's get to it. Dan began his MMA career on December 16th, 1994 at the age of 36. Prior to his debut, he was an amateur wrestler, which led to a career in pro wrestling. He also gained experience in judo, sambo, and jiu-jitsu before he entered the UFC 4 three-fight one-night tournament. In the opening round, he fought Anthony Macias. Dan was ragdolling Anthony around and this included two huge suplexes. This led to Dan getting a hold of his back where he locked up a choke that forced a tap. In the semifinals, he fought Marcus Bossett. Dan brought the fight down and locked up an arm triangle choke that forced a tap. In the finals, he fought the UFC 1 and 2 tournament winner, Boyce Gracie. Dan absolutely dominated for the entire fight by securing takedowns and maintaining top control. But at the 15th minute, Hoist locked up a triangle choke off his back that forced a tap, handing Dan his first defeat. He came back three and a half months later to fight in the UFC 5 one night three fight tournament. In round one, he fought Joe Charles. Dan brought the fight down right away and after some time above, he locked up a rare naked choke that forced a tap. In the semis, Dan fought Oleg Tektarov. Dan immediately brought the fight down and connected with big shots from above. This opened up a cut on Oleg's face which forced referee Big John to stop the fight. In the finals, Dan fought Dave Benito. Dave landed some big shots in the clinch right away, but then he got taken down which led to a key lock by Dan the force to tap, making Dan the UFC 5 tournament winner. This led to a shot at the inaugural Super Fight Championship. His opponent was former King of Pancrase, Ken Shamrock. This was the battle of the wrestlers and with Dan trying hard to secure a takedown, he was exposed to getting his neck locked up in a guillotine by Ken which forced to tap. Following this defeat, Dan entered the Ultimate Ultimate 95 tournament. In the opening round, he fought Paul Verlands. Dan quickly brought the fight down and locked up an arm triangle choke that forced a tap. In the second round, Dan fought Tank Abbott. Dan put on an absolute beatdown as he brought the fight down and connected with a bunch of shots from above. But he was unable to finish the fight so by the end, he won by unanimous decision. In the finals, Dan fought Oleg Tektorov, making it their second meeting. Oleg had no answer for Dan who was dominating him everywhere the fight went. After 30 minutes of action, Dan won by unanimous decision, making him the ultimate ultimate 95 tournament winner. At UFC 9, Dan fought for the Super Fight Championship. His opponent was champion Ken Shamrock, making it their second meeting. This fight wasn't very eventful as both men were not allowed to headbutt or throw punches due to the laws that the UFC event had to abide. So the two circled around for most of the fight and also had some moments on the ground. But after 30 minutes, Dan was awarded with the split decision, making him the new super fight champion. At a Valley Tudo event in Japan, Dan fought Doug Murphy. Dan brought the fight down and after some time on top, he locked up a key lock that forced Doug to tap. Two months later, Dan fought Dennis Reed. Dan won the fight in round one with a neck crank. After this win, he fought Mario Neto. This fight lasted for 40 minutes and for the most part, it was Dan who was controlling the action with his wrestling. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. Dan picked up a submission win before fighting Steven Goss. Steven got slammed hard before getting locked up in a rare naked choke that forced him to tap. Dan returned to the UFC after this win to unify his Super Fight Championship with the inaugural Heavyweight Championship. His opponent was Mark Coleman. Dan tried to bring the fight down, but his attempts were denied. This led to Mark connecting on the feet before he mounted Dan. Mark went on to lock up a scarfold choke that forced a tap. Dan picked up a win and a draw before fighting Ebenezer Fontes Braga. Despite some early adversity on the feet, Dan was able to survive before bringing the fight down and connecting with shots from above that forced the doctor to stop the fight. Two wins later, Dan 
and fought John Dixon. Dan brought the fight down and threw ground and pound that eventually forced the tap. He picked up another submission win before fighting on Pride FC's first event. Dan's opponent was Kimo Leopoldo. This was a back and forth battle on the feet for the most part. Dan had some moments with his wrestling, but he was unable to finish the fight. Due to the lack of judges, the fight was ruled as a draw after 30 minutes of action. Four months later, Dan fought Kevin Rozier. He finished Kevin in 53 seconds by taking him down and connecting with knees to the head that forced the ref to step in. Dan won his next four fights and at the same time, he was pro wrestling with the WWF. In August of 1998, he fought Chris Franco. Dan secured a takedown and threw ground and pound which busted up Chris's face. This forced the doctor to stop the fight. After fighting to a draw against Pat Militich, Dan fought Joe Fraley. Once again, Dan brought the fight down and after some shots from above, he locked up an armbar that forced a tap. Dan picked up three more submission wins before fighting Brad Kohler. This fight was wild as Dan suplexed Brad multiple times and at one point, both men fell out of the ring. Brad was unable to get back up after this, so Dan was awarded with the win. He won four more fights before fighting Josh Barnett. Although Dan found some success with his wrestling, Josh was fighting more and also had some moments on the feet. Then in round four, he locked up an armbar that forced Dan to tap. Dan picked up a win after this before fighting Marcus Silvera. Dan tried to bring the fight down but was in trouble from being submitted by a few guillotines. Eventually, he brought Marcus down and locked up an arm triangle choke that forced the tap. Dan won his next four before returning to the UFC. So at UFC 27, he fought Pedro Hizo. The fight ended quickly as Pedro connected with light kicks that dropped Dan which forced Big John to step in. This was Dan's last fight with the UFC. Dan went 5-1 before fighting Len Walker. Dan secured the takedown and threw ground and pound before locking up a rear naked choke that forced the tap. He went on to fight to a draw against Travis Fulton before fighting Forrest Griffin. Dan's size and wrestling was too much for Forrest who was unable to do much for 3 rounds. By the end, Dan won by unanimous decision. 3 more wins later, he fought Mark Smith. Dan got rocked early by a left hand but he was able to reverse the position following an armbar attempt. This led to an Americana that forced Mark to tap. Dan went 2, 1-1 one one before fighting Corey Timmerman. Dan got dropped by punches early on, but after that, he began to dominate Corey with his wrestling. After 3 rounds, Dan won by unanimous decision. Now after this, most of his fight footage isn't even recorded, and a lot of that was due to the fact that he was way past his prime at this point. He was 44 years old and nowhere near the force that he once was due to injuries and aging. Therefore, he was no longer a draw, so by this point, he was fighting on low-tier cards. Regardless, in April of 2005, he was inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. And since then, he fought for 7 more years before fighting one last time in 2012 at the age of 53. There were talks of him coming back in 2016, but nothing ever materialized. So after going 101, 19, and 7 in a career that saw him become the first and only Triple Crown Champion in the UFC, how good was Dan Severn actually? The Triple Crown Champion title was awarded to Dan since he won 2 UFC tournaments and the UFC Super Fight Championship, which really shows how dominant he was in the early days of MMA. Dan's initial run with the UFC lasted a year and a half, yet he was still able to accomplish so much in that period of time. It could have been three tournament wins had he not been submitted by Hoist Gracie in the finals of UFC 4. Regardless, he proved that he was one of the best fighters in MMA back in the day, and a lot of that was due to his wrestling. In fact, he was the first world-class wrestler to fight in the UFC, which is huge as wrestling is the most dominant style of fighting in MMA today. And that dominance all started with Dan who was levels above everyone when it came to grappling. He brought the fight down with ease and held his opponents on the floor without any troubles. He wasn't a ground and pound expert like Mark Coleman, but his submission skills were deadly. What made Dan's offense so effective was his size and strength. Especially in his prime, he seemed impossible to stop. But I have to admit, his stand-up was non-existent. He was not good on the feet when it came to attacking or defending. And honestly, he never really improved that area of his game. Which is a shame, but it also shows how dominant he was only with his wrestling. And that's been a reoccurring theme over the years with wrestling as an MMA. The only difference is that now they are becoming more well-rounded. But it was Dan who was the first to display how dominant a fighter can be with good wrestling. And he proved this with two tournament wins and a super fight title. Had he retired after his run with the UFC in the 90s, there is no doubt that he would have still been a Hall of Famer. But he decided to continue to fight afterwards. Personally, I thought he should have called it a career after his defeat to Pedro Hizo at UFC 29. It was a quick defeat that showed that there was a new age of heavyweights on the come up. And with him being 42, at the time, it was clear that along with all the injuries, Dan wasn't going to be able to compete against the new best heavyweights in the world. And that showed in his career after that defeat as he was no longer fighting top level fighters. Yes, he was still getting wins and never lost more than two fights in a row. But these fights weren't for any major titles and most of his opponents were either not very good or didn't have much experience. But I have to admit,
it. The longevity of him staying active is what really impresses me aside from his early UFC accomplishments. He fought 127 times. That is an insane amount of fights. On average, he fought 7 times a year. In 2004, he fought 12 times. And his quickest turnaround was 6 days with the first fight being in Japan and the second one being in the US. Despite the level of competition at times, this is impressive considering how many injuries fighters sustain. Especially for Dan who was in his 40s for most of these fights. Plus, Dan was also taking damage in pro wrestling. His body truly went through hell and back, and I believe his style of fighting which saw him not take too much damage due to his superb wrestling is the reason for this. But what impresses me about all of this is that he made his debut at the age of 36. Had he started earlier, not only do I believe he would have had more fights, but he also would have accomplished way more. Regardless of his time at the top being short, he made a huge impact on the sport and proved that even after his prime, he still remained as a badass for years. That's why I would give his MMA career a 9 out of 10. He stayed in the game for so long, even though though he had nothing more to prove. And I don't care what the degree of competition was, 101 wins is not easy. Because most fighters call it a career when the spotlight is no longer on them. But for Dan Severn, he kept going because he loved being a fighter. My name is Keon and this is my take on Dan the Beast Severn. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? Please put in the comments down below because I love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But that's all out for now, so I'll see you in my next one.